Mm-hmm. Now that, that is a big piece of glass. The build quality of this lens feels basically the same as the other Samyang lenses that I've tried and it doesn't have any kind of buttons or anything else on the lens except for this ring that we call the focus ring right here, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. The casing of the lens is made out of metal which gives it this like clean look that I personally think is kind of cool and you also have this like red stripe that is kind of a trademark for the Samyang lenses for Sony FE mount. <sighs> the front element of this thing is huge. I mean, look at this thing and you can't remove the lens hood because the like the whole glass element is basically fused together with the lens hood. And there's also no option to put a filter on here because this lens doesn't have a filter thread. So that's kind of a bummer. It comes in at 500 grams or 1.1 pounds for all you Americans out there. So I wouldn't say that it's a light lens, but it doesn't feel that heavy either, but it will be a little bit front heavy when it's mounted to your camera. It is however kind of a small lens considering the wide focal length and the wide aperture, but like if, if the lens hood wasn't here, then it would basically be on par with the baddest, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Can't. The focus ring on this lens is one of the absolute best that I've tried when it comes to the Samyang lenses and it is like it feels really really smooth especially if you compare it to the 85 millimeter that I did review of a while back and you can check out that video right here if you want to do that. It is also very precise and it doesn't do this weird nudging thing like the 85 or 35 did. Personally though I do not like that they had this rugged metal on the ring instead of rubber because again this will get scratched really easily. When I did my review of the 85mm Samyang lens, I was actually really surprised that that lens did have a weather sealing gasket at the back of the lens, but this lens, however, does not. I don't know why Samyang decided to put a weather sealing gasket on a 85mm lens and not this one, because this is a landscape lens, so this would probably like be outside in harsh weather just as much as the 85mm lens, so uh, Samyang, Dislike, put under. The focusing distance is 20 centimeters. That's a centimeter, two inches. 20 centimeter. 7.87 inches. And it is actually five centimeters closer than the baddest 80 millimeter lens. And it might not sound like much, but it will give you more options to play around with all those crazy perspectives that you can do with a 14 millimeter lens. And with that said, it brings us into the image performance. Let's talk about that for a while. Eh? It is actually really soft when shooting it at wide open at 2.8, but if you stop the lens down to f4, it gets sharper. And like the sharpest sweet spot of the lens is somewhere around like f7 or f8 when I tried it out. It will give you some vignettings in the corners, but uh, personally, I don't think that is an issue because I think that images looks kind of cool and I usually add vignetting to my images. And out of curiosity, I also did a comparison with the 16-35 millimeter lens that I've got to see which lens was going to be the sharpest one at f4. The difference between 14 millimeters and 16 millimeters might sound like like a really tiny bit, but it's actually kind of a big difference and you can fit a lot more in frame, especially if you're shooting like indoors or like huge landscapes and stuff like that. But the 1635 is way sharper at 16 millimeter f4 than this lens is at f4. When it comes to the bokeh, it can give you some really like nice blurred out backgrounds, but since it's like such a wide lens, you actually gotta be so damn close to your subject to get that blurred out background. But I went out, I shot some portraits and uh, I gotta say, they turned out really, really good.
The autofocus is actually really quick and accurate most of the times. I can't say that it is on par with the 1635 or the baddest because it does have some issues, you know, going back and forth before it's finding the focus. And the IAF works on the lens as well, but it does jump between the eyes and the face autofocus back and forth, so it's not really that accurate. But, uh, you know, you probably won't shoot portraits with this lens anyways. The video performance of this thing is okay, I suppose. Like, it's not on par with the other lenses that I've tried in the same focal length, such as the 1635 or the baddest, but it actually works kind of good. It does find focus most of the time, but it does this, like, really small focus hunt before it actually settles for the focus, which is something that I personally have a huge issue with because that is something that the other lenses doesn't do. I don't know why the Samyang lenses does that, but that might be something for Samyang to look into when they are designing their new lens. The biggest downside of this lens is that it actually was really unreliable. I tried it out this morning and my camera didn't even notice that this lens was attached to the camera. Like I tried like taking it off and mounting it again and restarting the camera and all that and all of a sudden it worked but then it happened again and then I tried it on the a7 III and then it happened again, you know, it kept happening but I don't know why it happened, you know, I couldn't find a pattern. And that is something that you might want to be cautious of because you don't want to go out in the field and like, huh, there's no lens attached to your camera. But with that said, this lens is mainly aimed towards landscape photographers, interior photographers, and maybe even some astrophotography. And even though it has a couple of like weak points, I would say that this is a great lens to start with if you really need a wide angle lens with a really wide aperture. But personally, I would not buy this lens if I was looking for a wide angle lens. In that case, I'd rather go for the 1635 lens because that will be a way more versatile lens than this is because this is really, really specific to some specific things. You know? So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this lens. Would you buy it or would you buy another lens? Um, you know, it's a really interesting piece of glass. If you like this video, make sure you do give it a thumbs up because that does help a lot. So thank you so much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, that'd be really appreciated as well. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And ooh, it is warm in here. It is very hot, as we say here in Sweden. Uh, oh, thank you for watching. Take care.